This is the lesson for Chapter 6, Section 1, titled Solving Systems by Graphing. And so in this section, what we're going to end up seeing are two different equations. And they're going to ask us to graph them on the same coordinate plane. So oftentimes, we'll end up seeing two systems like that, one, one on top of the other, but they'll typically put a brace around it. And that brace symbolizes that we're going to graph these, these two systems together. And so we're going to put them on the same coordinate plane. And so we have three different ways or three different types of answers we could end up getting. We either have one solution, which is what we'll typically end up getting on the problems that you do tonight, or we might have infinitely many solutions or no solutions. So let's go through which ones mean what. Now, one solution represents where the two lines intersect. And that's what a system is looking for. It's looking for a common value that each have. And so at this point right here, looks like that point is negative 1, positive 1. That is the only point that these two lines share, and that's what we're looking for. And so oftentimes when we solve systems, and later on we'll see some real-world examples where we use systems, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that optimum point at which the two lines occur at. And so that's what we're mainly going to be looking for. And they have some different vocabulary terms they use here. So this is the lines intersect at one point, which is negative 1, 1. The lines are, have different slopes, and that's what we see here, and the equations are consistent and independent. And so just some vocabulary terms that they end up talking about when we have just one solution. Here we have infinitely many. That means we have the same line. So the, lines aren't going, the equations aren't going to appear as though they're the same line. But when we go ahead and solve for the y value, or y equals mx plus b, put it in slope-intercept form, we will see that they are the same exact equation. And when one lines up on the other, we say there are infinitely many solutions because all the points that make up this line here, and they're so close that you can't even see them because they're just right next to each other, the, all those points are solutions. And so this is a consistent dependent type of equation. And then we have one that's no solution. And no solution means the lines are parallel, so they'll never intersect. So we won't get that one solution. And since they have different y-intercepts, we'll see that they never are on top of one another where they have infinitely many solutions. So we say there's no solution because they will not cross. And those are called inconsistent equations. So notice that infinitely many when we do have solutions, either infinitely many or one solution. Those are consistent where a no solution is inconsistent, is not consistent. Notice how when we have one solution it is independent and when we have infinitely many the two lines are dependent upon one another. And so that's some vocabulary we have there. So let's get on to these problems. So first step, I think, is the best way to solve these is to solve for y. So if y is not solved for, I would solve for y. And the reason is, is that way you'll be able to see if we have the same equation and it's much easier to graph because then we can find out what the y-intercept and the slope are. So in this case, we're going to get y by itself and we'll have ourselves the slope and the y-intercept and that's what I'm going to look for. So here the y-intercept is 3. So I'm going up 3 spaces, 1, 2, 3, and then using the slope. So the slope in this case is negative 1 over 1. So it just allows me to plot lots of points because I want to find out where these lines are crossing. And if I can get a bunch of points plotted, it'll be easier to see where those lines cross rather than just drawing a line arbitrarily and having to guess where they end up crossing. So that's my line for the first one, and sometimes you can go ahead and just draw the line between them because all those points that make up that line are solutions, even the ones in between the points I have. And when I take a look at this next one, I'm starting down two spaces on the y-axis. So I go down two, that's the y-intercept there, so down two spaces. And then the slope is 4 to 1. So up 4 spaces, 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. And you see, this is why I like lots of points, because that way I can see that they cross there. If I just had used the intercepts, the intercept method on this one, I would have two points and I'd draw a line between them. And it might be, when I draw the line, it might be a little crooked if I didn't use a ruler, and it might be a little tough to see. So once you see that that's where they end up crossing, that's the solution. So this has one solution. And the solution is, it is 1, 2. I got that because that's the ordered pair. 
that that point represents. So that is our solution in this case. So this next one, again, it's in the slope-intercept form. I'm going to start with negative 2, so down two spaces on the y-axis, and then use the slope. The slope is 1 to 2, so up one space over 2. And I'll just do that a bunch of times, and then I'll go the other way as well. So down 1, 2 to the left. And then there's my line between those points, and let's take a look at the other one. So the next line has a y-intercept of positive 5, so it's way up here on the y-axis, but notice the slope. It's going down 3 over 1 to the right, so down 3 over 1 to the right, down 3 over 1 to the right, and you see you get those to cross at that point. And so we'll go ahead and draw the line between those points so you can see it really nice and clearly, but this is the point that I'm looking for, and what is that point? Well, that point is two spaces to the right, one space down. So two, negative one, and that's the solution of the system. Again, the system is just the two lines drawn on the same coordinate plane. So looking at this next problem, again, its first equation is in slope-intercept form. Positive six is the y-intercept here, and so on my graph, I'll just put six up here, knowing that it's just one space above where my last... Uh, coordinate is, and then I'm going to use the slope. Now, typically I'd go up 3, 2 to the right, but I'm having trouble doing that, so I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 2 to the left. Do that a few times, down 3, 2 to the left, and those are the points I've got. So again, if I don't see where it crosses, maybe they do cross down here, I'd have to draw some other points. And so on this one is not in slope-intercept form, so I'm going to do some work here. I'm going to go ahead and take that equation and solve for y. So this was the original equation. Whenever you want to move something to the other side, like I want to move the x over, notice that I have to do an opposite operation, so it just switches signs. So a real quick method is, okay, knowing that it switches signs, I can just put the x on the other side with the opposite sign. So I'm going to start with the positive 1, that's the y-intercept, and then I'm going to use the slope. Now, typically the slope tells me to go down 1 and then 1 to the right. Now, when I do that, you see I'm not getting to the line, so I need to be able to go the other way. I need to go up 1, 1 to the left, and that's where I'll see those lines cross at that point right there. And so I'll draw the line between them so you can see that. And we'll go ahead and label what that point is. It's two split two spaces to the left, so negative two, and three spaces up, so positive three. So that is the solution of the system. The solution is just the point at which they, they cross. And the, we can also think of this as the only point in which they share. And so that's why that's the point in common. So these are all one solution problems. They are consistent equations that are independent. And so let's take a look at the next two types of problems we'll see, and so here they are. And so we'll see that on this first one, we need to get y by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm dividing by 2, and divide the entire equation by 2, both sides. So I'm left with y equals x, 1x, or 1 over 2x minus 1. And so I'm going to start down one space on the y-axis, use the slope, up 1 over 2 to the right. And I'll do that again going the other direction as well, down one to the left. You see there's my line right through those points. And so on this next one, though, I need to do the same sort of thing. I need to divide by 3. Now, it's a little tougher because I have this fraction, so let's take a look at it. Here's where it's nice to understand some principles of math. And so what will be a little bit easier for you to see is if we go ahead, instead of dividing, let's multiply by the reciprocal here. And so when I do that, I'll change the color a little bit, multiplying by that reciprocal. You can see how the threes cancel out here. Well, I have to do the same thing with each of these terms. And you see, if I show that reciprocal, you can see how the threes cancel out there and leave me with one. So I'm left with one half x minus one. See, three goes into three one time. So I have a similar equation. Actually, I have the same exact equation. If you look at these two equations right here, they are the same exact equation. So this line is going to line up on the other one. See how those points will be exactly the same. I have to go down one on the y-axis, and then I have to use the slope of 1 to 2. So I have a solution in which every point on that line is a solution. And so this is called infinitely, infinitely many 
many solutions because they are the same because the lines are the same. They are the same line, and so if I graph one line on top of the other, there's going to be infinitely many solutions. And if you look back over here, here we have, again, the same sort of situation, and the slopes are the same, y-intercepts are the same, so we have the same line. They are equations that are consistent and dependent. So let's go back to this next one here, and on this one, we go ahead, y is already solved for, so I see that the y-intercept is 3 on this line, and I use the slope. Now, the slope on this line is 1 to 1, because the number out in front of x is just 1 when you don't see a number. So I'm going to go up and then to the right, or down to the left. And I'll go ahead and draw a line between those points. Now the next line, notice how that one looks similar. It has the same slope, but the y-intercept is different. It's negative 1. So I'm starting down one space, but notice that I'm using that same slope, so I cannot get those lines to cross. And so those lines are parallel lines. So we've got parallel lines there. So the lines, lines are parallel. And they're parallel because, because the slopes, slopes are equivalent. And so when we have equivalent slopes, we're never going to get those lines to cross. And so if we never get those lines to cross, we say there's no solution. Is no solution because... The lines do not cross. So if I can't get those lines to cross, there's not going to be a solution. That's what we see here. So let's go back to the original page here. And it says, again, no solution when we have lines that are parallel. Because they have the same slope, but they have different y-intercepts. And we say those equation, equations are inconsistent. So those are the types of problems you're going to see on tonight's homework. Good luck.